That rage blew a hole in him, man. Hey everybody, I'm Uncle Bucky and welcome to Uncle Bucky's Wild Kitchen. Well, I'm going to show you one of my favorite recipes today on ground venison and that is my cheesy barbecue venison meatloaf. It's very simple. As you can tell, there's not a lot of ingredients in it. And um, as always, you know, I tell you, you can add or subtract or put whatever you want in. But this isn't your mom's meatloaf where she dumps the egg some breadcrumbs and some ketchup in it and mixes it up and throws it in the oven. This is a really neat way to make our venison into the cheesy venison or cheesy barbecued venison meatloaf. So what you want to do is start with a pound or if you got a big family you can double this recipe. Now start with a pound of ground burger, put it in a bowl and here I'm going to tell you what I like to do just because it makes it easier to get your spices put out is go ahead and smash that well you want to wash your hands first but <laughs> smash out your meat like that that way instead of having a big clump there we can spread everything out now very simple I like garlic like it a lot you put in whatever you want you don't have to put this in you can put any kind of a seasoning you want in here but this is what I do now my buddy Philip makes these diamond plate seasonings and they're awesome because basically rather than have a whole bunch of different seasonings you got them all mixed up and he's got a bunch of them and I'll show you at the end how you can go to my Facebook page and find out how to get these beautiful they're great I love these now this is the barbecue and we're gonna dump that in probably gonna put about two two tablespoons full in there alright done with that this is next. This is just Parmesan cheese. If you don't like it, you don't have to put it in, but I'm a Parmesan cheese freak. Okay, now for some of the other ingredients. I like a, I like onions, so I'm going to put about a quarter of a finely diced medium-sized onion in there. I'm going to go ahead and take two eggs. Um, now I'll start off with just about two-thirds of this, because sometimes I don't use the whole two eggs, but you kind of got to play it by ear when you're making a uh, meatloaf. Now, this is a secret ingredient of my mother's. You know, breadcrumbs are great. Uh, you can get Italian or you can season them yourself. But why not take Ritz crackers, put them in one of your grinders, or you can just actually crush them up yourself. This is ground up finely Ritz crackers, and it just gives it this really buttery flavor. And it, it was a secret of my mom. She put it in quite a few of her recipes. So we're going to go ahead and put about oh, a quarter cup or so to begin with in there so this is what you're gonna have now what we want to do is we want to mix this up however we're gonna throw something else in there any kind of cheese you want now this is cheddar and I chopped it up as you could tell in about maybe one one eighth one quarter inch cubes uh, you could put shredded in here if you'd like I found that the cubes tend to stay together and melt slower and end up being a little bit cheesier in the finished product but you can do it any way you want so this is about eight ounces of it six to eight ounces so go ahead and put that in and now get your hands dirty get in here and just mix that up and you're going to want to mix it up just like you mix up any other meatloaf and just smash it around and um, you know it's easier to add into a meatloaf or, or any of your your recipes if you put too much spices in or too much of one thing it's, it's really hard to take it back out now you want to get this in to where you've got about all the cheese kind of thoroughly mixed up. And when you get the cheese mixed up, you pretty much know you've got all your other ingredients and all your spices mixed up. Now what you want to do is you want it to be kind of tacky like this right here. Okay, We're going to form it into a loaf. Now this is a time that if you think that you need some more egg, um, put it in. But I've done this so many times um, that I just... I've really, really figured it out that you need about an egg and a half <laughs> instead of two eggs, but you can do it however you want. So here we go. Now we've got our block or our loaf for the pan. Now, 
rather than just throw this in the oven at 350, I'm going to sear the one side and coat it with barbecue sauce in a black iron skillet. And then we're going to put the black iron skillet into the oven. So hold on, give me a second. Let's move the camera and we'll show you how we do that. In about two tablespoons of olive oil. If you want, you could put butter in there, but butter tends to burn quicker. Uh, and I'm just not a big fan of it, so I put olive oil and I'll put it up pretty high. And then once you see that it's kind of starting to smoke, let it turn it back down to medium. Now put your meatloaf in there. We're going to want to sear this. So now is when we take this barbecue sauce, and you can use any kind of barbecue sauce you want. And we're going to baste it on the outside of this. Um, I don't add any in with the mix, only because I don't want to overpower the other seasonings in here and the cheese. You want to kind of have, to me, when you're making a recipe, you want to kind of blend all the seasonings so everybody, you taste all of them. You don't have one overpowering. So. We're going to let that sit. It's probably going to take about maybe a minute. And we're going to brown up to one side, flip it. We're going to put more barbecue sauce in and then shove her in the oven. So we're almost done with this. So now we're going to flip it over. You spray grease everywhere. As you can tell, some of that cheese is already melting. So go ahead again. And we're going to baste this up. We've got the oven preheated to 350. But anybody that's around Fort Wayne, Indiana, I want to urge you to go to dirtwayne.com. This is a composting site, and for a nominal fee, I mean, it's awesome. It's very very inexpensive per month. You get this bucket dropped off to you once a week, and you put all your eggshells, or and there's a whole list of what you can recycle. You can even recycle a lot of the uh, containers that they're using now for carry-out food. Uh, and they compost that, and they make organic dirt, and they'll bring it to you too as well. But check out Dirt Wayne. I love the name, too, because I love Fort Wayne. But DirtWayne.com. It's awesome. It's an awesome composting. So always have your mittens. These are made by Pampered Chef. As you tell, I have a lot of their stuff. Love Pampered Chef stuff. It's awesome. I don't even get paid to say that either. All right, time to rock. Let's get her out. And there you go. Now, you want to let it rest for five minutes before you cut it, but I'll show you the finished product. It's uh, beautiful. It's got a nice crust on the top of it. We'll go to our Facebook page where you can find the recipe for this, the writing of it. That way you'll have it with you. Uh, you can watch other videos so you can find the link to get the spices. My nephew Mick is making hot sauces and they're awesome. Uh, you can find how to get those there. We'll even have a link for Dirt Wayne if you're a Fort Wayner. But anyway, this is a finished product. It's absolutely delicious, and you'll love it. It's simple, easy, and it tastes amazing.